Can Auburn win games using the quarterbacks the way that they currently are? Freezing temperatures are likely for several hours inland and a few hours closer to the coast. Yes. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby. Thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. And happy War Report Wednesday to all who celebrate Mike G of the War Report hanging out with us. Yes. Yeah, we'll talk about play calling. We'll talk about Samford. But Mike G, first things first, the quarterback rotation. Peyton, 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 Robbie, Robbie, Peyton, 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 Robbie, Robbie. Is, is there, is this currently set up for Auburn quarterbacks to succeed the way they're currently using this rotation, Mike? Uh, I'm going to say no, Zach. It's a hard no for me, actually. Okay. Um, Peyton Thorne has not settled, two games in has not settled in. Sure. Um, and I don't, I don't really think that's debatable. Uh, what may be debatable is why he has not settled in, but he certainly has not settled in. So mm-hmm. why hasn't he settled in? Well, play calling has not been smooth, I would say, and it definitely wasn't smooth against Cal. A lot of questions were asked of Hugh Freeze about what the game plan was, Zach, on Saturday. Um, they came in. It seemed like they would let him let it fly against what was the worst pass defense in the pack last year. They allowed right. 279 yards a game. Auburn managed, what, 94 yards through the air? That's crazy. That's crazy. Uh, But they also put in a cold running back to start. They ran a bunch of RPO stuff with Thorne, and I don't think he was – I don't think he was set up to succeed in this game. I I don't. I think they hung him out to dry a little bit. Um, And and, and then you bring Robbie off the bench, an obvious running – down like you know what i mean (laughs) like someone said to me on twitter well robbie's predictable i said well what they're calling for him is predictable sure all of this is predictable uh so yeah i i you know again i know we'll get to it later hugh freeze had some comments about the play calling uh but no i don't think this has got to get better quickly it does quickly yeah it it does and it's kind of i guess it's it's good in some ways that you're playing sanford because i i think this travel was a little tough on this team, just talking to a few of the guys. And you don't have to worry about that turnaround as much when you're hosting Zamford versus, you know, going to College Station Open Conference play in two weeks. So you can use Saturday as a get-right game, kind of sure. go through some live game reps that aren't against yourself. There's a lot of value in that. I don't care what the talent differential is in that. But still, like, if it doesn't look somewhat similar to UMass, I'm going to be a little surprised. Not going to panic if it's not, unless it looks really bad, mm-hmm. Mike G. But I don't think we're going to really know if they kind of nailed the the play calling or nailed the quarterback rotation or nailed the game plan until next Saturday, which kind of makes this Saturday a little tough. Yeah, look, I mean, I don't, I don't think that Peyton Thorne had a spectacular performance against UMass. Um, so I do think that it should look exponentially better than UMass for it to be game three, right? Um, You bring Peyton Thorne in, Zach, because the floor with him was supposed to be higher. So far through two games, this floor looks about the same as we've seen. Yeah, Auburn before. A lot of, like, a lot of inconsistency, um, a lot of missed reads, a lot of badly placed throws from both quarterbacks. Um, and you know, it it hasn't come to me, it hasn't come together offensively just yet. So they've got to figure it out. I think their problem is going to be, this is your last real throwaway game before you get Mm -hmm. into sec play. So if it doesn't look the way you want it to look, how do you, how do you pull it together to go on the road for for Texas A&M? Are you riding with Thorne? Are you making a switch? You know, I I have a lot of questions about how Hugh Freeze is going to manage this moving forward. Hmm. I haven't really thought about the, the, the switch aspect till you said it. I don't think there's any way they would make the switch before Texas A&M. I, I just have a hard time buying that. Mm-hmm. Can you think of a scenario where they wouldn't start Peyton Thorne against Texas A&M? No, I can't. Okay. And th- they've, they've, they've set it up that way, though, Zach. Like, listen, uh, the coaches have to take responsibility for what we're watching. You can't throw Peyton Thorne under the bus. Right. Sure. Um, uh, you can't throw them under the bus at this point in the season. But I will. I think two things can be true at one time. 
he's not looks great, but you know, I expected the floor to be a little higher, but they, they haven't helped him either mm -hmm. in, in my book. And that's a little disappointing from the coach that we expected to be the quarterback guru. You went to great lengths to bring Peyton Thorne in here. Um, and I, I think fans want to see that floor raised, right. Uh, sure. to an acceptable level and 94, four yards through the air is not it. It's not it. It's not it. And, you kind of got to look at a big thing that we've talked about on the show this week, Mike, has been receivers and targets and just mm. shocking little playmakers getting involved in the offense outside of the running backs, Rivaldo, and then the two slot receivers, Javarius Johnson and Jay Fair. You know, we were talking before we clicked record, like Shane Hooks um, was hardly anywhere to be seen yeah. on Saturday. Same with Jair Shorter. And I would not have guessed that a few weeks ago as we were preparing for the season that those guys would have virtually no impact on the offense. I, I would, I would have lost a lot of money if I were to have bet on that. Well, look, he, he, he actually came out yesterday while we were at the presser and said five and six are our best receivers. And we got to figure out how to get them. Well, it's hard, them. hard to argue with that. Right. <laughs> right. But they're not built for the outside. He also said they're not built to play on the outside. They're too small. Right. And they'll have a big catch radius. And so you've got to bring the other guys along. Um, so at this point, you have to get the ball to your best playmakers. Uh, you know, I, I thought the touchdown by Jay Fair showed why he can be an elite receiver at this level. Ball was a little bit behind him. He caught yeah. it you know, almost. He caught it like it wasn't behind him. And then make, turned the corner and got upfield and scored the, the touchdown, right? Rivaldo Fairweather showed why he is a dominant force, right? I mean, just essentially reaching over. It wasn't quite a moss, <laughs> but he reached over and he made the play. And I, I thought Thorne made uh, a throw, a, a, a good enough throw there where give, give, give a guy like Fairweather just a chance to catch that ball and he should catch it, which he did. And it ended up being the game-winning touchdown. Well, I, I expect more of that going yeah. forward. Give these big bodied pass catchers that you brought in a chance to make plays. And I know Nick Martyrs missed time and he was consistently with the ones whenever we mm -hmm. trotted out there and were able to watch some of practice, heard good things about Nick Martyr with the ones over the course of fall camp. But your Jair Shorter and your Shane Hooks, give put them in situations to win 50 50 balls. I, I get they're not creating as much separation as you would want them to. But still, I mean, we kind of saw this when Bo Nix was thrown to Seth Williams, right? Like, mm -hmm. still give them those 50-50 balls, and that's going to have a chance to kind of ignite the offense, convert on third down. I love the 50-50 percentage way more than a lot of the plays that we saw Saturday night in Cal Berkeley. Yeah, your quarterback just has to be able to put the ball in a position where it is truly 50-50. Yeah. Uh, hear, hear me out, Zach. Let's, let's go back to the first scrimmage of fall camp. Okay. I tweeted out something that said, the Methods boards ablaze. Oh no! About the order of the quarterbacks and how they did in camp, right. right? And so far, through two days of camp, or I'm sorry, two two games of the season, um, uh, I would say that the play on the field has been pretty representative of how I I was told that the quarterbacks did in camp. Uh. Thorne has not looked amazing. So I, I remember still has inconsistencies, right? And you, you know, put Holden, Holden one. Who did you put two? Robbie. So you, you tweeted out Holden Garner, Robbie Ashford, Peyton Thorne. Yeah. Okay. I don't, I don't, I don't think Holden didn't win this job because of his ability, right? I think he lost his job because of the experience of the other two and the athleticism of one, right? Um, but you know, in year right. one, if you're Hugh, and I'm not Brent blaming Hugh Freeze for going the direction that he went. Um, I'm just saying the, the guy with the best arm is, is on the bench right now. So what are you, what are you saying? You think Holden should get a shot on Saturday? What, what are you saying here? I think you got to get him. I, I, I think you got to find a way to get him some meaningful reps on Saturday in number one, in case of injury down the road, uh, uh, first and foremost, like every, everybody's one play away from being one step higher than what they are. Or sure. number two, right? Like if you, if you, if you decide Robbie or Hold or, or or Thorn isn't it, right? Does it automatically mean Zach a flip from one to two? Or right, if play is not good enough, does three get a field promotion into the two spot? Like you know, I just I think you got to at least try to get Holden ready to be at least the number two quarterback this season. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know. 
I don't know if I fully agree with that. I think Holden has a good arm. Sure. I just don't think we need to be looking at the third string quarterback. Quite yeah. yet. Yeah, I, I don't think you should be caught up on the fact that he is like the third string makes it sound like he's so far behind these guys. I, I, I like, know. I, I shouldn't you know have said I mean? it that way, but yeah, but, but like, technically he is a third quarterback yeah, yeah, on the depth chart. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, I just think he's a talented kid. And um will after Saturday, depending on how they look, yeah. Uh, both quarterbacks. <laughs> now both quarterbacks look, you know, you've got some decisions to make. You know, I think ideally the game's out of hand by the sec, you know, the end of the second quarter. Yeah, it should be and, similar to UMass, right? Yeah, and you could bring him in and see him throw the ball and see if he can duplicate the performance he had at the end of UMass, right? Um, and if he does, man, you know, for for a long time it said, or at that second spot on the depth chart, you know, we obviously Robbie's been the number two quarterback, sure. uh, but you know, you've got you've got this is your last chance to try to flesh this out to see, you know, is a guy are they getting it? Right. And is this fixable for the rest of the season for these top two quarterbacks? And if it's not, uh, you've got to come up with a scheme that allows you to win games the rest of the season with either one of them at the helm where you gotta get a guy in there who can do what you're asking him to do. They've got to figure out what they're doing as far as the rotation. Th that's for sure. Yeah, it's um, killing both of them. It's killing, it's both, killing of them. both of them. And look, I I'm all for Robbie getting touches, but the way they gave Robbie the touches Saturday Hurt Robbie. That did not help Robbie Ashford. Didn't help Peyton no. either. Didn't help the offense. Didn't help Auburn. And I think they're kind of going out of their way to get Robbie's touches. And I think they need to let the game come to them. And when the opportunity arises, then you put Robbie Ashford in the game. So we'll see how they handle that on Saturday against Samford. Let's talk about play calling in just a second. Should Hugh Freeze take over play calling or at least consider it? We discussed that in just a moment right here on Locked on Auburn. Today's show is brought to you by our friends at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or, of course, you get your money back. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com slash motors. eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Mike G of the War Report, our guest on this War Report Wednesday. A lot of talk about the play calling, rightfully so. It's not really what we expected when Hugh Freeze was hired to be Auburn's head coach. And, of course, he passed on play calling duties to Philip Montgomery. Still not really what I expected based on what we saw Saturday night. Your thoughts overall on the play calling and how do you fix it? Uh, I asked him about this specifically yesterday, Zach. I asked him about play calling. I said, okay. how, how would you characterize what we saw on Saturday? Uh, was my question. His answer to me was telling because it was four minutes long at a 22-minute press conference. <laughs> <laughs> you know, four-minute answer. Uh, I think uh, Hugh, Hugh Freeze understands there, there was a lot to unpack there, which is why his answer was so long. Um, he did his best not to – throw his coaches under the bus but he also acknowledged that it's got to get better right he said he called three plays that game right one was a touchdown to fairweather he did not say what the other two plays he called was uh but i'm going to assume it was the touchdown to jay fair and uh you know i don't know something to demari elston uh, either way <laughs> hugh freeze has given up play calling for the first time in his career yeah, And he admitted, listen to, this is probably the most honest coach Albert has had. He said, it's hard. It's hard. He, he, you know, he used these words, not wanting to jump in. But, you know, he's, he said he spent a lot of time with the defense last week. He's going to spend a lot of time with the offense this week, helping trying to help them figure it out. He said, I'll draw them up for you. We just got to figure out something. I still have high confidence in those guys. But, you know, similarly uh, to against, uh, like against UMass, he had to sit down after and have some really hard discussions with his coaches he's holding them to a high accountability level here in terms of what we saw 
it wasn't good. And he said that as well, too. Look, man, it wasn't good. It was, it was ugly. Yeah, it was it ugly. Was. 230 was. yards of total offense. Aul- Auburn actually got outgained by Cal. 273, I think, or 274 to 230. Wow. And they won that game. So, yeah. you know, this was not a good team they played. Uh, and I know what people are going to say, oh, you got to give Cal credit. No, I'm not giving them any credit. They were Yeah, bad. there's a lot of people have been on me this week because I haven't. They, I'm still not high on Cal. I'm, 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 I'm not on you, Zach. I'm with you. <laughs> they yeah. were bad. And, you know, losing to that team would have been an embarrassment. I don't care about the travel. They they, they were not good. They were un- – the fumbles are on Auburn, right? Um, uh, uh, the, the, the interception – uh, the thorn through that's on Auburn, whether it's on thorn or the receiver, or I'm not, I'm still not sure what happened there, but like, it looked like an overthrow, but on review, yeah, it looked like a bad throw to, to hooks. Yeah. Yeah. It looked like an overthrow, but there on review, there was some responsibility on the receiver there as well too. And, you know, it just, t- to me, this was just, this was about as bad as they could have played. I did not agree with the decision to start Jarquez Hunter. I, I love Jarquez Hunter. I felt like they should have eased him into the game. Uh, 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 you know, he looked rusty to start, and it stalled the first drive. I, did, I don't like calling RPOs with Thorne. You know, uh, he's not a ball carrier, and he went to the sideline and didn't secure the football, got poked out, and they were very fortunate that that wasn't called a touchdown because it should have been, right? That's four yeah, it should points. Have been. Sure. That should have been a touchdown, right? But that Cal was a scramble, though. I mean – that wasn't like a designed RPO. Oh, yeah, sure, 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 right? But, you know, I guess my point is, is you got to put these guys in positions to do what they do best, right? Sure. You know, by the numbers, Thorne was bad on the move at Michigan State. He was not accurate. Yeah. You know, he turned the ball over, and we're seeing some of the same things here at Auburn, right? So you just got to know who he is, keep him in the pocket, right? You mm-hmm. know, Dylan Wade got called for a hole where he broke contain, and, and, and if, if, if Wade didn't hold him, Thor was going to get run down by the end yeah. there, right? So, you know, you know, Hugh Freeze talked about penalties kind of setting them back. I I don't love that narrative. I think that there was no flow. I think when you don't have any flow to your offensive play calling, you're going to get penalties, right? Your guys are going to be improvising and, and doing things that are off script and, and penalties and turnovers are going to happen. So the coaches, to me, the coaches own this one. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, I believe. And and it starts with play calling. If you, if you don't have the right call, you know, it's it's really hard to talk about execution and, and other things. Right. Like, you know, I, and that's just where I, how I feel about it. Yeah, I, I do want to I want to circle back to your comment about Jarquez Hunter, because mm-hmm. in hindsight, I agree with you, especially because the drop off from Jarquez to Damari Austin. If there is a drop off at all, it's very, very it's it's minuscule. Small. Right. Yeah. yeah. But one, it may have been a nod to Jarquez to say, hey, we've got your back. Sure. Right? It could have been symbolic. And also, and Hugh kind of hinted at this earlier in his press conference earlier in the week. I think they thought they could run on Cal with anybody. I don't think they ever really considered the fact that they wouldn't be able to run it, even with the rusty with Jarquez Hunter. So I don't think they need I don't think they put a whole lot of thought into that because they went in there with the assumption they were going to be able to run the football and they weren't. So I don't think that decision meant as much going into it as it probably did after the game actually started. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Uh I, I think they thought they were going to be able to do a lot of the a lot of their base stuff, right? Yeah. You know, I mean they listen, Auburn wasn't expecting to have to go super saiyan Zach to, to win this one. They thought that they could just operate in their base form, no power-ups, and go straight at Cal and beat them. And then around the third quarter, it's like, we might have to go ultra instinct here to, to win at the end. And they had to pull something out. <laughs> You're laughing, laughing at my TV. I just watched a lot of Dragon Ball. But Yeah, half of the people aren't going to know what you're saying, but I get it. Yeah. yeah they're going to look it up. They're going to look it up after this. But I guess my point here is, is, is that at some point, I was waiting for the pivot, and it felt like Auburn didn't feel – you had tweeted out during the game, I think Auburn's going to be fine. I think they thought that until about mid-third quarter, and then there was some panic, right? Yeah, yeah but there were still some situations, though, where like, okay, Auburn's about to take over. You felt it. Then mm-hmm. Damari fumbled. And then – make sure I got my timeline right. Then, then Auburn scores. Thorne goes four for four. Beautiful drive. Great drive. And then, like, we get the ball back. The game's over. Great. Jarquez, don't fumble the football. 
And then he fumbled the football. And it's like, oh my goodness, you know, the defense has, do they have one more stop at him? And fortunately they did. Shout out DJ James for that game ceiling interception in the end zone. But I still think there were so many moments in that game where if Auburn just doesn't shoot themselves in the foot, it's not a close game, even in the fourth quarter there. Because I think, I think Auburn was moving the ball at a pace where I think Cal's defense realized that Auburn had won. And then, you know, Auburn gave him a freebie at the end there. So I don't know, man. I, I said this earlier in the show. I don't know if it was with Charlie Five or with Lindsey, but I think there's a very real chance that the offensive woes that we saw Saturday night were isolated to Saturday night because okay. I just don't think it's ever going to be that bad again this year. Oh, man. Listen, uh, whenever it gets low, Zach, it can go lower. <laughs> uh, so I, I, I'm not as That's convinced fair. as you. I hope you're right. I definitely yeah. hope you're right. Uh, but I, I do think that this staff has – has what it takes to get this corrected. You know, my only concern is, again, this was the dream. This was your dream start to the season in terms of schedule. And though they put two W's on the board, because uh, you know we did our boss at toss at loss at segment. Uh, our friend Auburn memes thought this was a toss, and it ended up being a toss. I thought it was a boss. Like, like, listen, they should beat this team and, sure. and by a couple scores. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that going into Texas A and M. Uh, You've got to figure out a way to pass the pay. You got the forward pass has to work. Well, uh, we we saw Miami dice them up for a ton of yards through the yeah. air, and you got to find a way to, to get. I don't just say you got to pass for like four or five hundred yards like Van Dyke did, but you know you've got to have you've got to be able to pass well enough to keep defenses off your star running backs because the, look, let me put this. You know, I made all the comments before the game, right? And I thought it was really foolish because the game plan was always going to be stop the run and make these Cal quarterbacks beat you by the numbers. They just weren't very good. And yeah. if they listen, if they had left the other dude in, Auburn definitely wins by two scores. Agreed. Right. I was terrified, Zach, when they brought the, the other guy in. I was like, oh, how will they adjust? Turns out they had a game plan for they were that ready. as well, too. They were ready for that. That was very encouraging. Uh, yeah. Now, if you're Auburn, You've got to find a way to make adjustments, and you got to make it before the game. I mean, if, if Cal had a kicker who could make kicks, uh, it probably would have forced them to try something different a That's lot right. earlier. <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying Auburn doesn't still win, but I think if that dude's making kicks, they they would have had you know you, you maybe you're down nine or something, and now you you have the reality of having to get it together before they did. So I get it, man. I good get teams, it. man. Good teams will force you to do to get your stuff together earlier in the game, and that's what we want to see from Hugh Freeze uh, 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 Saturday. And then going into Texas A and M, you instill some faith in your players and in right. your coaches that they will have a good game plan that will be executed at a high level on the road in College Station. All right. So, what can we learn from this upcoming Saturday's game? We discuss in just a moment, right here on Locked On Auburn. Today's show is brought to you by our friends at Jace Medical. They have a product called the Jace Case. It provides five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use. All it takes is a Jace Case. Uh, All you got to do is fill out a simple online form and uh, jump on a quick call with one of their board-certified physicians, and they send you this Jace Case, which is very, very cool. Um, With all of the supply chain, with, with medicine, and kind of some uncertainty throughout the world. I mean, we kind of all experienced this with the pandemic. Uh, Jace Case wants you to kind of have medicine to help you in case something goes wrong. Uh, so the Jace Case is simple. You go online, you fill out a form, you get a prescription, life-saving medications right to your door. The Jace Case gives you peace of mind so you're not just hoping you have access to medication in an emergency. Jace Case makes sure you have the medication in hand. You can save more than $360 by getting these life-saving antibiotics with Jace Medical plus an additional $20 off by using my code LOCKEDON, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, at checkout on jacemedical.com. That is spelled J-A-S-E, medical.com. Mike G of the War Report, our final few minutes of this War Report Wednesday. You kind of touched on, I think this is one of my bigger things, when you talk about Auburn taking on Sanford, a far inferior team this Saturday, what can Auburn do where you actually feel better about the Texas A&M game? Because I think 
if Auburn torches them or beats them as bad as they did UMass, we'll feel good. But it's like, okay, is the same thing going to happen when you go on the road again? It's got to be the passing game, right? Yeah. Like, if you're Auburn, do you just say, hey, we're going to pass it? We're going to pass it more than we probably should against this team because we've got to find a way to get comfortable with game reps. Yeah, I think that Saturday, Zach, hear me out, is going to be about details. Um, you're going like to win this. That. You're going to win this game, but you know, yeah, you can complete a pass, but you know, is the is ball placement good? Are the receivers where they're supposed to be? Like, you know, if if they, if Auburn can execute the details at a high level, that gives you some confidence going. But if it's just one of those things where it's just clear that they won because they have better athletes. You know, this should be an absolute and total beatdown. Yeah. Uh, it should not be close. You should get off to a fast start. You need to score on your first three or four drives, and you need to make this over by halftime. Right? <laughs> that's it. Take these guys out uh, because you. that's how much better you are. Going into Cal, I felt like the only thing that could lose Auburn the game is the game plan, the preparation, and the coaching. Mm -hmm. That's how much better I felt the athletes were than Cal's athletes. Um, and that's what almost, to me, in my opinion, that's what almost lost them the game. So for Sanford, you go in and you can't, it's hard to know how real it is, but you could, there are still some things that you can glean from a beatdown against an inferior opponent, right? You can still ass assignment and alignment. This is what mm -hmm. Hugh Freeze talked about. He said, what, what do we have to get better at? Assignment and alignment. Right after UMass, he said we were lined up right, and we had some things that we need to improve on. Even though this looked bad, right, you know, in terms of how we beat them, it, it, uh, we we can't do that. We can't play like that. And, and and that's what you can see. You can still find those things in a win, right? So Auburn will win on Saturday. They'll win big, man. They'll win by three or four scores or whatever. But I'm going to be watching the details uh, at quarterback. I'm watching Thorne and Robbie, and I'm seeing when they complete those passes, how well is that ball thrown? I mean, it's the difference between good and great is in the details. And does Auburn have what? And, and the difference between average and, and good is in the details as well, too. It's mm -hmm. just a level of how detailed you are going to be. Thorne is a student of the game. I think that what we're witnessing with him right now is all in his head, personally. I think it's all I, I, I think I think you can tell that by looking at how he handled himself because like that's not who he that's is. Not every, who he is. Every, yeah, yeah. His everybody who talks higher. to this kid, it's how it's how poised he is and how impressive he is. And yeah, we didn't see that. Thorn gets out of his night. head, you're good, right? Thorn gets out of his head, you're good. And if you're the coach, everything like man, have, bring in a sports psychologist. You know. Uh, uh, get I don't one think it's those. that point yet, but yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. give him whatever he needs for whatever sure. Whatever he needs, man. Put him mm -hmm. in one of those those air deprivation tents like you know have him meditate at the top you know what i mean the mountain whatever it takes man to get him out of his head right and play football like you know how to play football because uh, you know for a lot of these guys that you, you can't play football at this level and not have ability to some extent you know right. so for a lot of these kids especially a quarterback it's mental it is mental uh yeah. we talked to the offensive line at our fireside we were like come on guys level with us you guys are the smartest group on the team and they were like Man, you honestly, Mike, we, you hope it's your quarterbacks. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you hope it's your quarterbacks. Yeah. And I, 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 yeah, they have to be, they have to know so much. And, and, and I think that he's put in the work in the playbook and the film room. And now it just has to translate to the field. I mean, yeah, uh, uh, Charlie Five and I are golfers, right? And my, com my, my comparison, my golf comparison analogy is there are a lot of practice range champions. It is easy to go out on the practice range before a round, Zach, and hit perfect shots. And then you go and you stand on the first tee, and it's hard, <laughs> right? Like, I mean, I, I, you know, hundreds of people are watching you. In my case, uh, uh, my playing partner and, and one old guy behind me. And it's harder to hit the ball yeah, right then. And, and so he's just got to make sure, you know, taking it from the practice range to the first tee, I think, is most players' challenge. And Thorne just has to be able to do that, man. I, you know, you play football your whole life. Go out there and play football like you've been playing football your whole life, uh, and, and, and things will be fine. Same goes for Robbie and Holden if, if they do it sure. well, too. These right. guys all have the talent. I, I want to see Thorne do it. I want to see him do it. Uh, yep. I think he moved his life down here. You want to see that work out for him. 100%. Mike G, how can people check out everything 
you've got going on right now? Ah, check us out at the War Report. We're not done with the Firesides, guys. We'll tell you guys which are coming, but we've got more Fireside action coming on the way. We're covering other sports as well, too. It's going to be great. I think this is going to be a good everything school year. Uh, So we will be covering everything Auburn sports this year on YouTube. All social medias, follow me at Mike Gittins right down there. We have, we've, got the, we've got the scoop for you guys. Yeah, find all my written work at auburndaily.com, and we will see you tomorrow. This has been Locked On Auburn.